Welcome back to another episode of the Husband Coaches Corner. Today, I want to be very cautious and uh, sensitive to the topic of divorce because I know that a lot of listeners, you guys are facing this and um, I, I just want to be sensitive to the fact that what we're going to be talking about today, it may not work for every single marriage and it really does depend on where you guys are in that relationship. Now, What I can say is the steps that I'm going to share with you today about recovering your marriage is something that my wife and I used in order to rebuild the trust, the confidence, the intimacy. Uh, And according to my wife's survey yesterday, one out of five, we're doing four on our marriage. So that's just something to take into context. Uh, this does work and it is going to take work. All right. So if I can put anything up front, what I am going to share with you today is not something that you can just walk through the park and it's going to happen. You actually got to put in the work, uh, and the time because it does take time depending on how long you guys have been married. Uh, it's going to take that much more time to rebuild the marriage. But what I can assure you is it is well worth it. 100%, you know, well worth what it uh, takes to rebuild the marriage. So, um, if you check the description box below, you'll see that there's a link to an article, which is kind of driving this conversation along with some, uh, some of the clients that I've been working with recently that are just really challenged with facing divorce. And how do you stay, uh, you know, prepared to love your wife through these hard times, because it is not a very pleasant time for all the men who are listening and they can relate to that. Right. Uh, I understand that it is not a very pleasant time. And if there is any sense of comfort or hope that I can give you is that uh, with, you know, the right work and effort put into the marriage, you can overcome these hard, challenging, and difficult times. Now, uh, the article, assuming that, you know, you guys want to follow along, uh, don't take this as, you know, a biased opinion. Uh, I want this to be more as just an eye, like an eye opener, right? Use it as an opportunity to learn about divorce. Use it as an opportunity to learn What's driving some of these decisions for people to uh, get divorced? And then when you start going through the steps that I'm going to mention here, uh, hopefully it'll make sense on how you can overcome your particular situation. And as always, if you need someone to just talk to and help you uh, map out a plan that would make more sense to your marriage, then check the description box and sign up for a free consult. Okay. And this is one of those areas where I think men need it more than they would like to say. So please don't don't hesitate to uh, reach out. My my role here is to help you uh, become a better husband and help you reconnect with your wife. That that's my goal and my heart. So one of the uh, paragraphs in the article it reads as this. The average age for couples going through their first divorce is 30 years old. Couples are more or less likely to get divorced based on several factors. Couples married between the ages of 20 to 25 are 60% likely to get a divorce. Those who wait until they are older than 25 to get married are 24% less likely to get divorced. Those with strong religious beliefs are 14% less likely to get a divorce. The higher attainment of education someone has, the lower the risk of divorce is. According to the U.S. Census Bureau um, survey, the top three reasons for divorce are incompatibility, which is at 43 percent, infidelity, which is at 28 percent, and money issues at 22 percent. Now, this is from the article on the worldpopulationreview.com. Uh, you know, take it as a credible source or not. Again, we're using this article more as an eye opener to the things that we should probably be a little bit more aware of in our marriage, uh, especially if we're facing divorce. All right. 
Now, I truly believe that all of these things can be overcome, right? Especially the last three things that they talked about, incompatibility, infidelity, and money issues. Like, those are the three things that I I don't think anyone would be surprised by this. And if you are, then I'm not trying to uh, belittle you or, you know, make you seem like you don't know anything. But I think we can relate to not being compatible. We can relate to infidelity issues because that happens. And we can also relate to money issues, especially at the time of this recording with inflation going on. Uh, there's a lot of families that are struggling financially, and this could be one of those reasons or areas where uh, their their struggles come in. So what do we do about this? Now, uh, what I do also want to mention is I don't want anyone to get so caught up in the numbers and the breakdown by state or, or things of that sort. All right. That's not the purpose of sharing this article. It's really just to share some ideas and uh, some challenges that you may be facing in your marriage in order to overcome those things, Uh, especially if, uh, according to this, if you got married in the ages of 20 to 25, I have some ideas of why that would be an issue or why that would lead to divorce or higher divorce rates. Um, But, you know, just fun fact, my wife and I, we got married on her 18th birthday. I was 19. She was 18. We've been married for 15 years at the time of this recording. Now, I won't tell you that it was 15 wonderful years, right? But it has been 15 years since the day that we said I do. And we've been working on our marriage for those 15 years. Now, to be fair to this article, our divorce uh, challenge or our divorce window when we were uh, contemplating it or just, you know, kind of kicking the idea around It was definitely in our 20s. Um, Now, I'm only 34, so that doesn't say too much. But hopefully that gets the the, the idea out there that, yeah, maybe there is something to getting married young. um, But you can easily jump into that 40 percentile, if you will, of being successful if you did get married young. Or if you are in your 20s, between 20 and 25, and you're thinking about getting married and you're engaged, then just stick with this because I think that this will be a value added uh, opportunity for you as well. So I've said a lot. Let's go ahead and get into the steps that my wife and I took in order to improve our marriage. So the very first step, as all you know, I'm a man of faith. I believe in Jesus Christ. And uh, the very first step that we took is we centered our marriage around Jesus period, right? I believe that because God created marriage, he ordained marriage, that it should be a marriage that honors him first and foremost. Uh, And we did seek counseling. And uh, in, in the counselor's session, he drew out this triangle. And at the top of the triangle was God. And on each corner of the triangles was uh, my wife and I. And what he said is, as we move closer to God, the closer we grew together, because uh, that's just how the illustration works. And it's actually very true. All right. So if you are a believer, um, then it is imperative. It is absolutely essential that you start to focus your relationship around Christ. Uh, Pray with your wife. Do Bible studies with your wife. Go to church and worship with your wife. One of the things that saved our marriage is my wife and I, we started to serve in our local church together. And that was a huge, huge benefit. Uh, Not only were we spending time together, but we were also uh, serving the Lord and growing closer in our connection to Christ, right? In our relationship and fellowship with him. So, It is absolutely imperative that uh, we center our relationships around Christ. Now, if you are atheist, agnostic, you just don't believe that there is a God, then uh, and, and you're like, hey, you know what? I've seen plenty of marriages succeed, and I won't doubt that. There are plenty of marriages out there, uh, case studies where they are not believers in Christ and their marriages are being are successful. Um, 
But what I would offer to you is how rich is that marriage? Because success is defined differently for every single marriage. And if you are in a relationship where you're a believer and your wife isn't, uh, then that becomes a very huge strain on your relationship. So uh, the importance is that you pray for your wife that, one, she comes to know Christ, but two, that you pray for your wife every day, especially if she does know Christ, that she's seeking him Because there's a level of richness that you only get when you center your marriage around Christ. All right. So hopefully that made sense. Um, That step one is center your marriage around Christ. And I don't believe that anyone should skip that step. But I also respect the people who listen to this podcast. And I love you. Um, And I would love to share the the gospel with you. So if that's something you're interested in and you're like, you know what, Chris, why don't you tell me more about Jesus? Then send me an email and I would love to do that. Uh, But if, you know, step one, you're like, nope, absolutely out of the question and you're still trying to fend off divorce, then I would offer you step number two, which is make your wife part of the plan. When my wife and I were struggling in our marriage and our divorce, uh, it didn't matter what type of plan that I personally came up with because she was the other half of our relationship. I had to include her in the plan, right? So when we started deciding to go to church together and worshiping together, uh, which was a true blessing, Uh, That was a conscious decision between the two of us to make that we were going to make this a part of our our life and our uh, our our habits. Right. Uh, And when we started to build that habit and we were consistent in that habit, because when it started out, I'll be honest, we did not go to church often. We did not pray with one another often. Uh, And still today, we struggle with sometimes praying with one another Uh, but we do it right. The point that I want to make here is the plan that my wife and I made together, we committed to each other and we said, you know what, we're going to make our, we're going to make our marriage work. And that's what I mean by making her part of the plan. Now your process could look a little bit different, right? Uh, the process of the vision of your marriage. I think you need to start there. When my wife and I sat down and we made our plan, uh, this was just after a marriage retreat. As many of you know, I'm in the military and we have some really cool resources available to us to help strengthen the marriage. Um, And we went to a marriage retreat where we were taught the vision of our marriage. And that was the first time that we, my wife and I, had ever heard of making a vision and like a mission statement for our marriage. Uh, And we took that to heart. We made a mission statement, albeit at the time, very, very basic elementary, uh, but we still made it, right? And then we turned that into our, uh, our mantra for our marriage. And over the years, it has developed into something completely different than what we started out with because we continued to uh, improve upon the vision, especially as we entered kids into the marriage so or into our relationship, into our family, right? Uh, the other thing that you'll have here is uh, areas that both of you need to improve on to rebuild the marriage. Maybe you are really good at communicating, but your wife isn't. Maybe your wife is really good at showing intimacy um, and making sure that you're taken care of physically, be it food, shelter, uh, like taking care of cleaning the house, whatever. Um, Maybe those are some areas where she's really good at, but you're not. And maybe that's where she's feeling the most vulnerable, where you're not helping her. So, you know, become a part of the plan and bring your wife in to be a part of the plan. And you guys develop whatever your uh, way forward is together. So maybe that's you spend a little bit of time helping her clean the house, right? Uh, These things, as little as they are, are absolutely instrumental and important to developing a long lasting and strong relationship. 
Now, the next thing is a consistent time to talk with one another every day. When my wife and I were facing divorce, we were living in this two bedroom apartment and I spent a lot of time in the opposite room or my office at the time. I was in the music production and I spent a lot of time honing in on my craft of music production from uh, sampling to editing um, to uh, you name it. Right. I was spending a lot of time on building that craft. And I was leaving my wife to be entertained by the TV or, or, you know, to be comforted by the TV. That is not a good method, right? Uh, I learned, I, I was young and I was silly at the time. Uh, but now that I've learned that it is crucial to spend time with my wife and talk to her, because that's something she values, right? I didn't understand how much she valued just being able to sit down and talk, right? And I didn't truly uh, appreciate the fact that I value sitting down and just talking. I enjoy talking with my wife now. Uh, we have some outstanding conversations and uh, I really do appreciate that. But I wasn't being consistent with talking to her and that's why we were starting to fall apart. Now, thankfully, we caught it early in our relationship and we said, hey, you know what? We're starting to become incompatible, right? Going back to the article. Uh, and we wanted to find a way to reconnect with one another. The next thing is planning to see a marriage counselor. Now, I think it is crucial that you don't go through the divorce rebuilding process on your own. And this is not me shamelessly trying to plug my own service here, right? Uh, I think I can help, but I think you definitely need someone to come alongside you and walk you through rebuilding your marriage. And if that's not me, that's fine. Go find a counselor that can uh, go find a mentor, a friend, someone who you trust enough that you can say, hey, look, this is what we're going through and we need that help. If you're a believer, go to your church. There are resources available at every church that I've been to. Um, and if you are a believer and you're like, hey, Chris, I need to get connected to some resources to help rebuild my marriage. Reach out to me. I got some external resources that are not me that I will be more than happy to connect you with. And, you know, just help you rebuild your marriage by bringing your plan and bringing your wife into the uh, process of developing the plan. You are building a team, right? It's a team effort. Both of you fighting to keep your marriage safe and, and, and whole, right? And intact. If you develop a plan on your own and you start wild gunning it, right, then your wife may feel some type of way about that or she may not even care at all because there's no investment, right? She has no skin in the game. So you want to make sure that you're bringing your wife in early and saying, hey, honey, this is what we need to do. This is what I want to do. This is where I think we should go. You're the leader. And you listen to your wife for the feedback. So that way you guys build a more cohesive marriage. All right. You don't have to do it alone. Now, step two, making your wife a part of the plan. Uh, we've already had step one, which is center your marriage on Jesus. Right. So now we move into step three, which is spend quality time together. Now, this kind of goes back to step two, where I was discussing you want to make sure that you are talking with your wife consistently, marking out that time. Uh, but the quality time goes a little bit deeper than just uh, sitting down and talking and having those conversations. Right. Uh, quality time. I am a huge fan of doing a physical activity. There's something about sweating with your wife, right? And I'm not talking about other uh, means of, of building up your sweat, right? Uh, what I'm talking about is going to the gym and working out or just going on a walk around your neighborhood. There's something about putting in the physical effort, right? And as your body releases 
whatever the chemicals are. I'm not a genius on uh, physiology and you know the biology of the body, but I do know that when you work out, you start to feel better. Your emotions change and you have this connection with your wife when you're doing it. All right. I'm not saying take your wife on a 26 mile run unless you guys are into those types of things. Right. But you should do something physically active together. Uh, like yesterday, my wife and I, we went out and played disc golf and it wasn't, uh, you know, my wife, she's not very good at it to be truthful. I'm not very good at it. Uh, but we were just out there throwing the discs around and having a conversation at the same time. Those are the types of things that I'm talking about that you do with your wife, physical activity, spending quality time, uh, and the time should be reciprocated, right? Now, you don't always have to do physical activity in order to spend quality time together. Maybe your wife really enjoys watching movies. Uh, Have a movie marathon day. I don't know, right? Whatever makes sense for your wife and for your marriage. Now, if you're like drawing a blank and you're like, Chris, I have no idea how I'm going to spend quality time with my wife. Well, here's some options. First, you can go... Uh, read a book together. All right. If you and your wife are into reading, then consider reading a book together or you can cook with your wife. Like you guys got to eat, right? You don't survive without eating. Uh, You can go in the kitchen and maybe both of you are terrible at cooking. That's even better, right? So there's tons of videos on YouTube that teach you how to cook things. You can turn it into a date and an experience for the two of you. Where you say, hey, we're going to cook chicken marzala. I don't know. I don't even know if I said that right. But the point is, you take some time, you cook the food, you enjoy the company with your wife. All right. This isn't rocket science. I'm. Yeah, hopefully you guys are catching on that to rebuild your marriage. You don't have to have this uh, super huge ta-da plan it can be very simple and straightforward. All right. The next thing is paint with your wife. Uh, And that could be painting a room physically, like changing the color of a room, uh, redesigning a room. That's a new one. I just thought about that. Uh, If that's something you guys are into, right? It's something that you're doing together. That's the point that I'm really making here. Do something together. Uh, But my wife and I, we like to make these uh, paintings where I paint half, she paints the other half, and we stick them together, and it turns into like this full scene. There are tons of uh, tutorials on YouTube. That's usually where my wife and I get our tutorials from, unless we go to a paint and sip class where we're creating something together. Um, But typically, we paint right here at the kitchen table in our house. We turn on YouTube, turn on some music in the background, and that's just another time for my wife and I to sit down and uh, talk with one another. We both enjoy it. It's not a very hard thing to do, and it's actually pretty cost effective. So give that a shot if you're looking for ideas. And then the last thing that I would offer up in spending quality time is dating your wife regularly, right? So do whatever this thing is that you find as a quality time opportunity. Do that regularly. Please do not be inconsistent with this. Find time on the calendar every week to do something with your wife that is more than just the daily conversation. I've I've been, you know, on the uh, previous episodes, I've talked about the importance of this, so I'm not going to go into that. But you got to date your wife regularly. Make the time and invest in that time, all right? And this is going along with making your wife part of the plan, right? So you plan when your dates are going to be, and then both of you protect that time. Step number four, be consistent. It's so important that you are consistent in the things that you do with your wife and uh, rebuilding your marriage, right? If you are inconsistent, you lose credibility. You lose the ability to uh, gain momentum, which is extremely, extremely helpful when it comes to uh, building our marriages and really just doing anything in life. If you're inconsistent, you will not make it 
to the end goal in which you are trying to achieve as fast as you would like to achieve it, uh, if at all. Now, some advice that I have on being consistent and some ways that I've been able to remain consistent in doing these things is one, you got to make a decision or I make a decision to do the thing that I said I was going to do, right? Make a decision to do the thing that you say you're going to do. Now, for me, it's just carving it out on the calendar and saying, okay, this is protected time. If something goes on my calendar and it's something that has to deal with my marriage or my family, I usually never move it. Now, that's not a a perfect science and that's not exactly true every single time, but If I say that this is going to happen and it's something dealing with my family, then I'm likely going to take care of that, right? I make a decision to do what I say I'm going to do. This is the same thing that you have to do as a husband um, and hopefully encourage your wife as well. But with you being the man and being the leader in the marriage, it is your responsibility to make sure that if you say you're going to do something, that it happens and you set that example for your wife to follow. All right. Now, the next thing that I do to stay consistent is plan time, date to complete the things, right? Planning the time and the date uh, that I'm going to do something. I already talked about it, but since I'm already making a decision and I've already planned when I'm going to do this thing that I decided upon doing, it just makes it that much easier. Now I just have to show up and execute. Now, I'm not the the best at doing things that haven't been planned. Uh, now, I, I do have, you know, a little bit of, uh, I guess, spontaneous decision making and um, I'm flexible in, in most cases, but I usually like to have a plan and it's OK if that plan doesn't work. The first time, at least it's OK if the plan doesn't work, however, Uh, If I don't have a plan and I get thrown into a situation, now I have to figure out where this fits with the stuff that I've already planned. So this is this is kind of the challenge of planning things out. Right. If you have something on the calendar and then something else pops up, you are now faced with the uh, which one takes priority. Do I do the thing that I said I'm going to do or do I have to remove the thing that I said I'm going to do and go do something else? Just food for thought, something to consider, uh, because that does matter. Uh, And then the next thing that I do to remain consistent is I ask for help and accountability. Now, as many of you have already heard, having an accountability partner or a mentor or someone that you can count on, uh, that is what's going to take you further. Now, my wife is my accountability partner in a lot of things, especially the things that deal with our marriage, right? She keeps me straight. If I'm stepping out of line, my wife, sometimes uh, not as lovingly as I would prefer, but always very truthful, um, reminds me that I am prioritizing other things over the family. And then that makes me go back to my calendar and saying, okay, where can I be consistent? How can I reshape the things that I'm doing to make sure that I'm still meeting my obligation and the things that I need to be doing for my family and rebuilding my marriage and and building my marriage, right? If there's something that I'm doing that is stepping outside of that and causing me to mess that up, then I need my wife to come alongside me and say, hey, Chris, you're messing this up. And then it's like, oh, okay, well, I better fix that, right? Uh, So just food for thought on that. Make sure that you are taking the time to ask your wife to be that accountability partner. Now, if your wife isn't willing to be that accountability partner to help you remain consistent, then that's where you go and you find a mentor or a coach or someone else that can be a third party that says, hey, how are you doing with this? Hey, you're starting to prioritize something else over your wife. Is that really what you want it to do? And then you can have those hard conversations with yourself or with that individual. All right. But the point here is you got to remain consistent. If you do not remain consistent, 
you are going to have a very hard time rebuilding your marriage and overcoming divorce altogether. All right. Now, no matter what your plan is to build your marriage, uh, this is the step that you have to kind of go down in order to really see that uh, come through and fully into flourishing. All right. So that was step four. Just to recap, so far we covered step one, center your marriage on Christ. This has to come first. Step two, make your wife part of the plan. All right. Whatever the plan is that you're going to make, you got to start with the very first thing is bringing her into it. All right. Step three, spend quality time. Include quality time into the plan that you guys build. Whatever that is, you got to say, you know what, how can we be around each other and do something that's entertaining uh, and engaging for the both of us? And then step four, you got to be consistent with doing whatever your plan is so that way you can rebuild your marriage. And step five is review your progress. Now, this, again, I'm not breaking news or uh, sharing anything that's over the top, crazy, hard to do, right? The concept is simple uh, and, and straightforward, but the implementation of some of these concepts is hard. But reviewing your progress is, you know, I keep saying things are crucial and important, um, and I don't want to make this, you know, seem like it's not as important uh, by saying it is crucial and important to review your progress. I think that they're all important in their own lane category, uh, things of that sort. But what you have to do is say, okay, what is my progress in the plan that we made? Set goals for where you expect to be uh, either by the end of the month by the end of three months, by half the year, by the end of the year. Uh, these are future things that both you and your wife are moving towards. And in the process, you guys are going to grow closer and more intimate. Now, if you're not reviewing that progress, how are you going to know that you actually made it? Right. And, you know, some some of the guys that I've talked to in the past and I'm not criticizing them. But when I said, hey, how are you doing? They'll be like, ah, eh, you know, I'm doing all right. And it's like, okay, well, what does all right mean? You know, like that's a very arbitrary statement. Uh, and, you know, it's like, hey, how often are you and your wife talking? Oh, we talk every day. Okay, good. When do you guys talk? What are you guys talking about? Like, you got to know when and what you're doing, especially when you are facing a divorce. And, you know, I'm a more analytical kind of person, so I get that uh, some of these things of writing stuff down and tracking it comes a little bit more naturally to me. Uh, but you can do a very simple logging technique to monitor your progress whenever you are making your plan, right? So you write your plan out and then you write your frequency and then you just make a little tick mark next to every time that you guys do one of those things. Uh, and then if you want to get one step further, then you put a date and another step further, you put a time uh, next to the tick mark. So now, you know, or maybe the date and time is all you need next to the thing that you guys said you were going to do in your plan. And then you can look back at it at the end of the week and say, OK, we said we were going to have dinner as a family uh, three days out of the week, four days out of the week. And then you look at your your. Uh, your progress sheet and you're like, Oh no, we didn't do that. So then you can go back and say, okay, well, why didn't we do that? Was there a real reason why, or did I prioritize something else over rebuilding my marriage or the thing that we said we were going to do? You see, that's how you start to really understand where your issues, your challenges, your problems lie in your marriage. But until you get to that level of uh, understanding and, and fidelity, you're going to always give those arbitrary statements of, well, you know, we're doing all right. And we talk often like you can't measure often. Right. Because often to me is going to be different to you, to my wife, to someone else, because there's no real uh, there's no real scope 
or left and right limit of what often actually relates to. Often just means more than once, but less frequently than what I probably ought to do, right? And just by me giving that definition, you might say, well, no, often to me means that I do it most of the time. And that is a different uh, breakdown. But if you have it written down, you can go back and say, okay, on Tuesday, we did it. On Wednesday, we did it. On Friday, we did it. But we didn't do it any other day of the week. Then you can have those uh, detailed conversations of, okay, well, why didn't we do it on these other days? What else was competing that caused us not to do it? Uh, Or were we having an argument? And then that can maybe help point you down uh, down a path to finding out, okay, well, Maybe we argue about things uh, more frequently on this matter or on this topic, and it's centered somewhere around when we're supposed to be having dinner. So maybe we can make a resolve that since we already decided that we're going to have dinner together as a couple, then maybe we have our argument after dinner. So we're at least accomplishing this together, right? Again, the importance of making your wife part of the plan So that way you guys can uh, come together and say, hey, look, we're not doing the thing that we said we were going to do. Can we modify and do something a little bit differently so that way we can accomplish the thing that we said we're going to accomplish? So hopefully that made sense. Now, the reviewing of the plan, uh, that is a frequency that you have to set for yourself. I personally I review uh, weekly and and quarterly. Uh, There are some things that I review weekly. I think I said weekly. I meant to say monthly. I review monthly and quarterly. Uh, There are some things that I sit down and I talk to my wife weekly uh, about. But usually our finances are checked out on a quarterly basis like, hey, or a monthly basis if we have a big purchase coming up, things of that sort, right? Uh, Because that all ties back into making sure that your marriage is good to go. Uh, Because that was 20 some odd percent, 22 percent of the marriages that were ending in divorce because of money issues. And I don't think that it's money issues alone. But uh, if I can remove that from the equation and make that less of an issue, then I think that our marriage between my wife and I is going to get better. It's going to improve. It's going to be phenomenal. All right. So that's the reason why I review when I do, but maybe for you, your review needs to be daily, right? Maybe you need to review how you're doing daily. Maybe you need to review how you're doing every other day. I don't know. That's something for you to kind of develop and figure out. Now, again, if you need help, trying to figure that out, like how often you should review, then reach out to me, set up a consult, and we can make a plan that's centered around specifically just reviewing your progress. Whatever it is that you need help with, uh, I will help you. And uh, hopefully this holds true to all of the clients who listen to this podcast that when we sit down and we do a consult, I'm not just telling you what to do. I'm understanding what your situation is and then offering you ideas and seeing if that's something that makes sense. Because if it doesn't, then we need to we need to tailor it. Uh, this is a game plan that is catered to you and your relationship. Uh, so hopefully that is something if you are someone that's struggling with your marriage and you're like, you know what, I just need some help, then reach out. All right. I will absolutely help you the best that I possibly can. So I've said a lot. I'll remind you of the five steps to recovering your marriage or rebuilding your marriage or restoring your marriage, which is step one, center it on Christ. All right. Center it on Jesus. Step two, make your wife part of the plan. Step three, spend time together, spend quality time together. Step four, be consistent with whatever it is that's inside of your plan. Do that on a regular basis. And then step five, monitor your progress. Guys, don't skip step number five. It seems like the the thing that you're like, you know what? 
I don't need to monitor my progress because I need to keep doing what I'm doing and I'm not seeing any uh, progression. Well, you're probably not seeing the progression because you're not monitoring it. All right. So step five is very important to the other four steps. Okay. Especially step one. If you're not monitoring how you're spending time with God in step one and how often you and your wife are spending time with God in step one, then you are going to have a very hard time moving forward down the line. Okay. So hopefully this episode is a blessing to someone out there. And if it is, consider leaving a comment if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts. If you are on Spotify, just give the show a rating. Uh, It helps it get into the ears of other people who may be needing this information. But you guys know guys. So if there's someone that really needs to hear this episode or any episode, then I would just ask that you share it with them. All right. And until next time, I want you guys to find a way to love your wife every day. Peace.